Today, the 2009 Nobel Prize for Chemistry was announced. And because there isn't a Nobel Prize in biology, the Chemistry Prize often goes to people who are working on the boundary between chemistry and biology. And today was an example just like that because the prize went to three scientists for working out the structure of the so-called ribosome, which is a biological structure that translates the message from DNA, which gives the genetic information of an organism, into a protein, the proteins that make all our bodies function and the bacteria and so on. The heart of this Nobel Prize is X-ray crystallography. So perhaps before we look at what the ribosome does, perhaps we'll go and see what X-ray crystallography is. Very convenient, it's just next door. Literally next door. And we could go through here if the door wasn't locked. So the prize is for working out the structure of a really complicated molecular system in <coughs> bacteria. But the basic equipment is the same for everything. And so we've got the equipment over here where our student Mark is actually aligning a crystal. So the idea is to find out the arrangement of the atoms and the crystal. So here on the video is a picture of Mark's crystal. You can see it's quite small um, compared to the tip of the thing it's mounted on. And actually in the apparatus, you can hardly see it at all. It's right at the tip here by the tip of my pen. And my hand shapes a lot, so you can't even see it. So it's just there. And the x-rays are coming out of this thing that looks just like my pen, this long silver tube, hits the crystal, and then the x-ray beam, which is a sharp beam, is split up into a whole series of small beams, which are registered on this camera here. And this camera then registers a whole pattern of spots. Mark, can you just show us some spots on yes, the screen? Definitely. So you can see here, you can see this sort of reddish background and then a number of spots here, which are related to the structure of the atoms inside. And one of the great problems is how to take these spots and actually get it into a form that will, can be transformed into the crystal structure. And that's one of the things for which today's Nobel Prize has been given. As the machine works, you turn the crystal round so that you can get different planes of the crystal will diffract the light and so you get more information to get a three-dimensional structure. So, now let's go back to the office and I'll take some of my dog toys and explain what the Nobel Prize was for. The Nobel Prize was given for solving how bacteria make, take the code, genetic code in DNA and convert this into proteins. Now, in DNA, there is a chain which has little groups on it, rather like these packets on this rod. And the order of the um, groups is a code which is translated into the links of the chain of a protein. So here you can see we've got black, green, black, and then here we've got green, black, 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 green, green, and so on. And you can imagine these groups of three markers on the DNA will translate into a particular amino acid, or amino acid as some people say, um, in the link protein. And a protein is a chain of amino acids, one attached to another, um, which are formed in a long chain, and then when you form the chain, it automatically, spontaneously, wraps up into some quite complicated structure. Not necessarily this structure, this just happens to be a toy, but you can see you get a tightly packed mass. And the question that people really wanted to know was how this part of every cell, called the ribosome, actually translates this code into that chain. And the first thing was to take the ribosome and actually t turn the mole molecules of the ribosome, which is really two big molecules, and get them to form crystals. 
So the first part of the Nobel Prize was given to an Israeli scientist, Ada Yunat. She took bacteria from the Dead Sea, where it's very salty, and these particular bacteria she managed to get to crystallize and get crystals which would give a pattern of spots like we saw on the X-ray machine. The ribosome was known to consist of two parts, a small part, which translates this, and a larger part on the top that, put tra that gets the protein. And the protein, now we now know, comes out as it's being made, like a channel out of the side of this large part. And the um, <coughs> first part of the problem of solving this was how to take these spots from the X-ray pattern and turn them into a structure. And it was the second Nobel Prize winner, Tom Stites, who comes from the States, who managed to um, work out the structure, I believe, of the large part. And then the small part was worked out by um, the other two prize winners, the third one being Professor Ramakrishnan, who comes from the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. Now, I might have got this wrong. Two of them did one part, one did the other. So eventually, instead of knowing that these were blobs, they got them structures down to the individual atoms. So you could actually see how all the atoms were arranged. The next question was, how does this machine work so it doesn't make any mistakes? Because you can imagine here the code is going through the bottom part and the chain is coming out. And if you're reading something fast, you sometimes read the wrong word. And if the, protein, if the ribosome makes a mistake, you get the wrong protein and things will, just won't happen. And so this is where Ramakrishnan's work came in because he showed that within this structure, there was a probe, which is now known as Ramakrishnan's ruler. That's an arrangement of mol atoms which can read along this thing, rather like my fingers. So not only that it can identify which of the bases in, in the um, <coughs> DNA, or the so-called RNA, that is used, that, that goes into the ribosome, and so it can tell black from <coughs> green to yellow, but at the same time, it can actually measure the distance between them, so it can make sure that it really does identify them properly. And it makes very few mistakes. 